Hello everybody. Welcome back to Read and Reread. I am Angelia and today I am going to do the Istanbul tag. This original tag was created by Jim at Jim's Books Reading and Stuff and I will link his version of the tag down below and while you were there take a look at all of his other great videos and content. Now Jim has done several cities tags and they are, I've done a couple of them, they're very fun. And Jim claims in this Istanbul city tag that this is his last original tag. And he also boldly claims that tags are sort of going out of fashion on book two. Now, I hope that both of these things are wrong. I hope it is not his last tag as he makes really creative and fun tags. And I also hope that tags are not going out of style because I like doing tags. In fact, I see several tags uh, videos today by other booktubers that I like that I'm going to watch later today. So I hope that the tags are still tagging. And um, anyway, they are today because I'm going to do this Istanbul tag. Now, my first thought when I saw the topic was, uh-oh, because I don't think I have read much or any Turkish literature. But, of course, that's the beauty of BookTube is that you find out about new things to try and new avenues that you have not yet explored. So I'm here for the adventure. I also love to do a little research. I am a, a chronic looker-upper. I, I enjoyed investigating some reading possibilities for this tag. Let's take a look at the questions in this tag and see what I can come up with on the topic of Istanbul and Turkey. Very interesting. Number one, Istanbul has many names. Which do you prefer? And if you watch Jim's video, he talks about three different names that the country has had uh, for this city. That the, Let me get, try that again. Three different names that the city has had over the course of its history. So Istanbul, of course, is a city in the country of Turkey. And it has been called Byzantium, Constantinople, and now Istanbul. And I think I like Constantinople just because it is fun to say. So I'm going to go with that one. Okay, here's number two. This one's a little bit longer, so I've got the question right here to read it properly. Orhan Pamuk won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 2006. Have you read any books by an author because they had won the Nobel Prize for Literature? Yes, I did. I read, now some, some authors that have won the prize, I had, I had already read them and then they won the prize, but the one that came to mind that I specifically read because she had won the prize was Annie Erno. And I, after she won it, I got the book Happening and I really enjoyed it. I haven't yet read anything else by Annie Erno, but I did get this one because when she won it, I wasn't familiar with her at all. Based on descriptions of her books and, and other reviews, I decided this one best matched my interests. I'll read you the little blurb on the back. I'm not going to go into a whole side trail because this is not about Turkish literature. But in 1963, Annie Arnaud, 23 and unattached, realizes she is pregnant. Forty years later, she sifts through her memories and her journal entries dating from those days clearly with clinical precision, gleaning the meanings in her experience. It really is a very slim and powerful little book. So that one I did read because it had won. Now, the author who sparked this question, Orhan Pamuk, I have not read this author at all. Maybe I will read this author. Well, not necessarily because he won the Nobel Prize, but that's a, that's a strong factor, but because... Uh, I started thinking about him due to this question in this tag. So I'll be, I'll be getting that in just a minute. Question number three is, have you ever visited Istanbul? No, I have not. Uh, I have not been to that region of the world at all. Um, maybe, maybe someday, I don't know. Have not been there. I got, I got nothing else to add to that question. Number four is, have you read a book set wholly or partially in Istanbul or have you seen a movie? set wholly or partially in Istanbul. Well, at first I wasn't sure, and a few things came to mind. So I noticed that Jim talked about the Night Circus, and I have read the Night Circus. I had kind of forgotten that it did have scenes and part of the book set there. So yes, I have. I've read a book set partially in Istanbul. He also mentioned Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. 
being uh, that she probably wrote it in a hotel in Istanbul or was inspired to write it or there's some kind of connection there and I have read that and I have seen the movie. I, I've seen the movie from the 70s. I haven't seen the more recent one and all this took place back in the 90s. I read this book and saw that movie with a group of 12 year olds that I had a book club with and they did not notice at all that the story um, was had you know out of date elements in it or that the movie was 70s style like they just thoroughly enjoyed the whole thing and they were very fresh to traditional mystery like they had not read a closed room mystery before and and that kind of at a little higher level than a young adult book so it was very fun more recently uh, we watched the show slow horses and the most recent season begins in istanbul there's most of the story takes place in london but uh and, and something happens in istanbul a crime occurs and that particular incident sets off all of the plot of this season so they keep flashing back to it so so that's what came to mind first that i that i'd seen most recently i'm sure i've seen other movies that have a scene or partially there but i don't I, i'm not thinking of them right now um so the other thing that this topic this question brought to mind was that there pretty much is a hole in my reading as far as turkish literature by by turkish authors getting back to that first question about orhan pamuk that's one of the most well-known turkish turkish authors because he has won the nobel prize for literature and so i did a little investigation about my library's holdings of books that had something to do with turkey istanbul etc fiction books and so he, quite a few of his books came up in the list. And so I, I got interested. And so I'm wondering now if I should put a book by this author in my TBR. So let me know what you think. If you have read some books by Orhan Pamuk, and the, here's what the library has. So they have Snow, which I've heard of, A, strange, um, a Strangeness in My Mind, Istanbul, Memories, and the City, other Colors, Knights of Plague, Silent, what did I write? I can't even read my writing. Silent, Silent something. I'll look it up again. Good grief. And My Name is Red. So if you have read any of those and you want to comment in the comments about uh, how that reading experience was, what you recommend, and I don't even care if it's not an, an author that would really match most of my tastes. I'm, I like to, to branch out sometimes and read somebody just because uh, they are highly regarded enough to win a prize, like the Nobel Prize. I'll, I'll give them a try and uh, see how that goes for me. So let me know. Uh, I also looked up the other author that comes up the most often when you investigate uh, well-known Turkish authors, who is Elif Shafak. And um, unfortunately, they did not have much of hers. They had the 40 rules of love, and then they only had a, um, like an e-version of Island of Missing Trees. Why did, now, that's a book I've heard a lot about. I don't know why they don't have a print copy of that book. And that's it. That's all they have. Now, I did find in my searchings a couple other books that, you know, I, I don't know, may or may not be good, but one of them really stood out because it looked just kind of fun, and it was called... The Gigolo Murder. And now, why didn't I write down the author here? But I'll put him up on the screen. The Gigolo Murder. Now, for some reason, this is book two of three called The Turkish Delight Mysteries. And it is set in Istanbul, and it has something to do with somebody who owns a drag club, and they're an amateur detective. And that, that sounds kind of fun. So I might have to check that book out and try it. So here I am bypassing all of the award-winning authors and zeroing in on the gigolo murder but let me know if you've ever read it or heard of this and this is where we're going to take a segue or a, a digression because that series is called the turkish delight mysteries and that made me think about turkish delight yes the candy and i have a story to tell about turkish delight so I don't know if you've ever eaten Turkish Delight. I'll put a picture of it up here, but I don't like it. But I found out it, it was a disappointing discovery. So let me backtrack. 
First, we have to go back in time, back in time to a little girl reading the Narnia books for the first time back in the 1970s. Little Angelia, probably, you know, eight years old, reading The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and the whole business about the White Witch offering Edmund the Turkish delight, and the candy is enchanted, and he just starts, um, he just starts spilling all kinds of beans and telling her stuff he's not supposed to tell because he gets, he gets addicted to the Turkish delight. And that, that just made me, I was so intrigued by the candy uh, because I've always been intrigued by desserts. And I have a long history of being obsessed with the, with the baked goods and candies and desserts in books. But so the Turkish delight was on my mind for years. And in my mind, it had to be something so good and so delicious that, you know, you would give up your your siblings for it. it, it that's got to be pretty good stuff. Somehow, of course, in my mind, I managed to make it chocolate, even though there was nothing about it. There was no description of it in the book that would lead me in that direction. And maybe they mentioned the rose water, and that probably sounded better than it really is, too. So anyway... Fast forward, years and years later, I am an adult person and I find Turkish Delight in an international food store in Dallas. So excited. I could see plainly from the picture that it is not chocolate. It's some kind of fruity candy. Nevertheless, so I buy the Turkish Delight, go home, open the box, and it is, it's just not good. It's all dusty and and thick and chewy, but you can't hardly get your teeth through it, and it's gummy, and there's not a lot of flavor, and oh, it was so disappointing, and I don't know if I just got a bad box or a stale box, or if it just is not that good, but that was the disappointing story about Turkish Delight, so tell me if I'm wrong about Turkish Delight, but that that's what happened. Let's get back to the tag. Number five is, have you read a book that mentioned the Armenian genocide? I do not think I have. and But I was pleasantly surprised that my library had several books specifically on this topic. Um, Jim talked about it in his video, that there is a law in Turkey that makes it illegal to reference the Armenian genocide and several different authors have been penalized for covering this in their writings. I, I'm not well versed on this at all, but I was happy to see that this is in my library. So if somebody, me or anybody else, wants to read a bigger picture of it and, and get books about it, it's there. So that, that was a good discovery. All right, and that's the last question on the tag. It's not a very long tag. Now, in Jim's video, he tagged 500,000 million people. And so I'm not going to add anyone else because they're probably already in the list. But if you are intrigued by this topic, if you either have read a bunch of literature by authors that are Turkish or books set in Istanbul, or like me, you don't have a lot and that's why you want to explore the topic, then consider yourself tagged. And until then, I will be back on Friday for Friday Reads, and I hope you have a great rest of your week. Have a good day. Bye.